Hi, I'm Ayman, and you want to know why I chose Harvard over Yale and Stanford. But before we start, I want to ask you to please watch to the end for an important message that I think a lot of applicants need to hear. Without further ado, let's dive into it. So throughout this video, I'm going to be looking at my script on my monitor, so I apologize if I'm not looking at the camera. But getting to these three colleges from the pool of 32 that I applied to was not difficult. And I also strongly considered other colleges such as Rice, Duke, and Carnegie Mellon leading up into the week before the enrollment deadline. I ended up at Harvard, Yale, and Stanford because they gave me a full ride, had good engineering, and most importantly, I visited them. So, Harvard, Yale, or Stanford? That was the question I had to answer. I want to acknowledge that many people would recommend Yale over Harvard because they say that Yale provides a better undergraduate experience than Harvard, whatever that entails. And for my engineering aspirations, many people would recommend Stanford over Harvard because Stanford provides a better engineering experience than Harvard, which may be debatably true because Stanford is an engineering focused school. If you must know, my top choice of all the colleges I applied to was actually Princeton. And my second choice was MIT. But I was accepted to neither of them, so I couldn't consider them. And so here I am at Harvard. Why did I pick Harvard over Yale and Stanford? First, let's take it from a logical approach. Here were my main considerations when I was choosing a college. Uh, first off, the quality of their engineering education, um, the activities and individuality that the college had, uh, the student culture at the college, uh, the proximity and opportunity for independent exploration and growth that I had at the college, and lastly, aesthetic. And so some other things to think about are, these are things that are important to think about, but not just for me, but for people choosing colleges, uh, choosing between colleges in general. Uh, but between these th three colleges, um, they were essentially negligible and didn't play a factor into my decision. You know, academic rigor and quality, uh, name or prestige, career prospects and opportunities from going to that college, financial aid, and networking, uh, networking and connections that you make at the college. And so, you know, these three colleges are pretty similar in what they provide uh, for those five points. And some other considerations that might be important to people are housing and dining, uh, study abroad opportunities, uh, campus size, degree programs, and diversity. And now that I'm at Harvard, here are some considerations that are also nice in retrospect. Religious involvement, resource availability, spaces on campus, proximity to my interests, and people. And I'll talk more about it when we get there. But first, let's dive into my main considerations first. Like I said before, if we're talking engineering, most people would pick Stanford over Harvard because Stanford specializes in engineering. However, I chose Harvard because it offers cross-registration opportunities with MIT. So I'd still have access to a top-tier engineering education. And if that's not enough, Harvard also built a state-of-the-art science and engineering complex just recently in 2020 with awesome modern makerspaces and laboratories that I plan to make full use of while I'm at Harvard. So that's why, in terms of engineering education, I picked Harvard over Stanford. Or at least it shows why Harvard at least has potential for engineering. Uh, <laughs> and of course, Yale is also not known for their engineering and they're not near an engineering school. So I didn't really consider it when I was thinking about engineering. And let's move on to clubs. So if we're talking clubs, extracurriculars and student individuality right now, it's, it's worth noting that both Yale and Stanford at their visiting days had extracurricular performance showcases. Harvard did not. And what I mean by this is that Yale and Stanford, like you went to a specific place to watch uh, different student clubs perform. At Yale, we went to a, uh, the, Schubert, the Schubert Theater and we watched like acapella groups. And uh, Yale had an interesting, many interesting groups like a rock cello band. And at Stanford, we went to, um, I forgot what it was called, but it was, it, it's B-roll, send the B-roll. And, um, and, they, have, they also had really cool groups. There's a, a, a group that was singing uh, Feel Good Inc. by uh, Gorillaz, and I thought that was pretty cool. But they also had like anime da dance groups uh, and rock climbing groups, and that was pretty cool. Honestly, I, I, if, I, if I was speaking honestly, I would have found my extracurricular niche at any of these three uh, schools. 
But the reason that Harvard trumped for me was because at Visitas, I got the strongest impression of the clubs out of the three visiting days. Um, you know, at Stanford Admin Weekend, I only saw the clubs at the club fair. And I didn't really get a chance to hang out with them because that was how, the way that it was sort of scheduled. And then at Yale, a lot of the cool clubs were kind of out of my niche. Um, I was looking a lot for like gaming clubs and science fiction clubs. And Yale mostly had like, like other clubs. Still very fascinating clubs, but they were not um, things that I was like very like in tune with, you know? And now moving on to culture. So, uh, culture is... I'm not a big sports or frat guy, so I'm not talking about culture in that way. But as, as I understand, it's like student life and traditions. And when I went to their visiting days, Stanford had a more extroverted party-like feeling to it. And me, I am extremely introverted. So Stanford student life didn't feel compatible with me. And um, as for Yale, Yale, Yale is a, a type of place where I, I, I do feel like you could be introverted very easily. But the reason that I chose Harvard over Yale is because I liked its residential college system more. At Yale, um, you're already put into your residential college in your first year and you stay there for the next four years. Whereas at Harvard, you join a house after your freshman year. So you get to choose uh, and um, when you when you join a house, you get to choose up to seven other people to be grouped with when you get assigned to a house. So you you all get to stay together at the at the, in the same house. And so at that point, you kind of form the friendship that you that that the friendships that carry you through college. And what I like about the system is like, you know, at, at Harvard, you get the chance to meet everyone in your year. You know, dine with them in the same dining room. Um, you got you kind of get the chance to like figure out where and who you want to be with. Um, and then you get to stick with that for the next few years. But at Yale, you're kind of already placed into those, into the residential colleges, and you also don't get as much exposure to other people. Um, they do have like old campus, uh, you know, the, a lot, some freshman dormitories are together in, uh, in old campus, similar to how Harvard has the art. And then they have other halls, like how Harvard has the union dorms. But I like that at Harvard, you get to choose who you want to be grouped with for the next three years. Whereas with Yale, you, you're kind of stuck with your residential college. I mean, of course, you probably could change it. But anyway, proximity. So some people want to be closer to home, which can be more convenient. And others want to be farther from home, which encourages independence. For me, Harvard was the midground between these two at Yale in Connecticut, I would be too established and too close to home because I come from Connecticut and I want to try new things. But at Stanford in California, I think I would be too far from home, which would make visits and bringing stuff from home impractical. At Harvard in Massachusetts, I would be far enough from home to be able to have a completely new experience, but also close enough for practical reasons like bringing things from home and visiting. <laughs> In addition, a lot of my siblings were in Boston, so I could rely on them if I needed to. Um, and, you know, it's very cool having my siblings in Boston. But anyway, moving on to aesthetic. For me, aesthetic refers to the environment and architecture on campus. This is very specific to me. Uh, it's very unique to the person because some people, like, they prefer different types of architecture. Me, I'm a light or dark academia type of guy. I'm not a big fan of the Stanford architecture, you, you know, like the big pavilion like constructions with arches uh, and red roof tiles. And actually, if I'm being honest, I like Yale's architecture the best. Um, it has the academia vibes and it's, you know, the beautiful stone constructed Gothic buildings. But nonetheless, Harvard's architecture does not fall far behind Yale for me. Um, you know, the, the brick buildings are still very cool. Uh, and the interior of a lot of the buildings are very awesome too, especially the dining halls and libraries of some of the upperclassmen houses. And I feel like the spaces and architecture at Harvard suit me just as well as, if not more, than Harvard. As with all universities, however, there is always a mix of architecture of old and new buildings. So this point kind of becomes negligible once you realize that 
you you have both the style that you're looking for and also like like the new modern spaces so you'll be able to um you'll you'll have a variety of spaces at any college um so this is not something that's super distinct between universities okay so moving on in retrospect there are things that definitely could have impacted my decision uh, to go to choose Harvard had I known about them. In fact, it would have made me choose Harvard sooner. First off is religious involvement. So Muslim life at Harvard is awesome. One of the, me one of the reasons that it's so great is because Harvard is one of the only universities in the United States where the Muslim chaplain is part of the office of the university president. This is a huge thing because this means that everything that uh, the, the Muslim community does here like Friday prayers, the holocaust, um, the events are facilitated in part by the university. We have fully ca we have fully catered iftar and sahur in an event space that is typically hard to reserve for 30 days straight. And no, it's not even dining hall food. It's actual like different cultures and cuisines that are specifically made in-house for Ramadan, for all the all the Muslims in the Muslim community at Harvard, and that's that's awesome. And in addition, we also have opportunities to go to Umrah, and that's that's a cherry on top. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to Umrah uh, anytime soon, but it's nice to know that I have the opportunity to visit if I ever want to. Um, and I. I am extremely fortunate to be able to join the Muslim community here at Harvard. And it's so wonderful. In no small part, thanks to Harvard for uh, everything that they've done for the Muslim community. So uh, I really appreciate you guys. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but to, to whoever I, wanna, I, I need to thank, uh, just, just thank you, because it's awesome. Uh, moving on. Resource availability. My friends at Yale were telling me that it's, it's hard to find tutors for their classes. And it made me realize that I have a huge support network here at Harvard. Not just because, you know, like Harvard's better than Yale or anything. I just, that's not why I was thinking it. I just realized not just academic advisors, but also proctors, peer advising fellows, and my dean, but also, you know, generally all the courses I've seen have so far have professors and TAs that host tons of office hours and uh, uh, time for people to ask questions and help them with things like, oh, oh uh, how do you use LaTeX or how do you use uh, MATLAB? And, you know, it's, it's hard to ask for help at institutions like this where so, so many people are independent. But and it's so and, and because it's hard to for people to ask for help here, it's nice for people uh, to be proactive about offering help here. And that's what I like about Harvard is that, like, you have the resources, you have a peer writing center, you can find tutors, and it's not difficult here at Harvard. It's not difficult to ask for help. So when you overcome that barrier of letting yourself find help, the resources are here. And not just that, the mental health resources that they offer here at Harvard are substantial and important. And you know, there's always, there's always CAMS, uh, which is, you know, the university affiliated one, but there's also peer counseling services like Room 13 and Echo. And it's extremely awesome that they have those things. At Harvard, I feel like I always have the ability to ask for help from others, to be able to seek resources and to have those resources available to me, which it's, it's awesome. And it's something that I think people should definitely consider when choosing a college. Look into the resources that your college offers and if the resources that your college offers are often available to you. Because it's always important to be able to reach out to someone when you need assistance or you need help. Okay, so moving on. Spaces on campus. Easy. I found a lot of cool places on campus. Um, now that I think about it, this is not something that's unique to different colleges, but now that I've seen the, the spaces on, at Harvard, they're pretty cool. I will say, like, if you visit Harvard, uh, on a college visit, you should check out uh, the SEC. It's gorgeous, the Science and Engineering Complex. Um, it's and it's well designed. It's awesome. Uh, also, take a walk through Lamont and Widener Library. 
check out Annenberg. You're not allowed in there. You can't go in Annenberg because it's only for freshmen. Um, but it's gorgeous. And the Science Center, go check out the Science Center because it's very cool. They have a museum in there. You should also check that out. The Natural History Museum too, you should check out. Uh, the Smith Center is amazing. It's the uh, Student Center. It's, it looks it, it's amaz it, it, it looks awesome. So go check that out. And there's also like tons of like just niche space, uh, niche spaces on campus that you can just you know go to and then study and you know it's chill. Okay, moving on, proximity to my interests. So Harvard has a lot of things that are related to my interests here. Um, you know, there's acapella here, and I got rejected from all of the acapella groups, but that's okay. Um, an active gaming club and science fiction association. That one. Whew, that's cool because people are learning magic um, in that club and you know, I'm, I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player, so I want to pursue that um, And I it's cool that they have like I find a lot of similar people uh, like like-minded like people who have the same interests as me here and I that's awesome and But I've also realized that I want to help in theater tech and this is because of my experience in fact um, which uh, maybe I'll talk about in a different video, but theater tech. Uh, Harvard has a very, very strong theater scene. I'm not a big um, in front of a stage. I'm not a big stage guy. I'm not a big uh, front man. I really like um, working uh, behind the scenes backstage. And I know that's very contradictory to the fact that I'm speaking on a YouTube video. But when I was at FAP, I, I just... I, I realized like I want to help out with the costume designs here, the prop design, and like the set design, and it, it was awesome to me. And in addition to that, I'm a big museum guy. And so having just left the Peabody Museum at Yale, it was very convenient to me that there was also a Peabody Museum at Harvard. So I will most likely be pursuing interests related to that in the future, that the museum stuff. And I've already joined uh, a student museum board at Harvard, so we'll see how that goes. <sighs> and most importantly, the people. The best part about the school that is already the best in a lot of things. A lot of people will, when they ask you what the best part about Harvard is, will say, the best part of Harvard is the people. I've met so many people here at Harvard, so many wonderful people, and everyone is just so respectable here. And they've made me feel like I belong here. Before I even arrived at Harvard, I found so many cool people in the class of 2026 Discord, like my friends Noah and Jade. <laughs> Shout outs to them. And <laughs> I know you're watching, Jade, but uh, and, and, and to this day, the Discord people stay strong, extremely strong, and they stay extremely awesome. For real, they're the most awesome people that I've met at Harvard. So if you're going to college, join your class's Discord, because the people on there are most definitely awesome. But they also use Discord, so be warned. <laughs> but also, <laughs> my proctors at FAP. So just FAP is the first year art program. Yes, funny name, I know. But they memorized our names so that they could call us over when we first arrived. So I, I got on campus and I was checking in and this group of people is just yelling to me at the, uh, from like on the opposite side of the tent. And I, I'm looking at them and I look behind me. Are they yelling to me? Did they say my name? Did they say so, like Emma? Did they say I'm on or Emma? And so like I'm, I'm staring at them and then they're like, yeah. And then I just, I just look forward. I'm like, they can't be talking to me. How would they know me? And so I check in, I go back to my room, and then I realize, maybe I should ask them. And so I go back and I ask them, and, and he, they, they explain, yeah, we were calling you over. And they explain, yeah, they memorized our names. And they made me feel like I was at home. Some, you know, sometimes I, I'd be sitting at lunch alone, and the proctors just came up to me and chatted. And they were so proactive and caring, and it was awesome that they did that. Um, like, I, I like just sitting alone at, um, uh, lunch tables just cause like, I have a hard time hearing people at lunch. And so I just, I just, I'm okay just like hanging out by myself, but it's really nice to know, like, 
if they see someone who's alone, they, they approach them and, you know, they talk to them and that's cool. And I've also met other, like, many awesome, caring people uh, at that. And I met, I, met, I met a guy named Jack, and he's a cool guy. Um, and I remember I was working on a Constellation project, and I was so into it, and I was working so hard, that I worked into lunch. And so I was about to miss lunch, and Jack came down to the shop I was working in alone, and he said to me, Hey man, you should take care of yourself and get some lunch. And you know, that's, that's a small thing, but I thought that was awesome. And you don't usually hear people say that. Uh, and for him to tell me that, uh, I can tell he's a, a genuine and kind guy. And you know, like even my professor from my museum seminar, he told me that he appreciated my contributions uh, to, to the class and that I brought energy to the discussions. And you know, you don't think of professors doing that. And it was really heartwarming to me and I felt like really encouraged by his words and that was awesome i know i say awesome a lot it's just the people here are cool and there's also my friend lucy who's just really bonkers amazing and it even feels inadequate to describe her like that because she's just so much more than that and of course there's my roommates Jaden and cliff who are just they are the best roommates ever. And I am I I am extremely fortunate. I feel extremely fortunate to have them as my roommates. Because they're just so amicable and supportive. And like we can compromise easy, like for a roommate contract, we didn't even like really talk about it because we were like, if there's a problem, we'll just we'll just talk about it. We don't need to write it into a contract. And best roommates ever. And it's awesome. And so I hope you know now why people say that the best part of Harvard is the people. Because honestly. They are. When you bring it all together, it's easy to see logically why I chose Harvard over Yale and Stanford. But the reality is this decision was more emotional for me. I thought about fit, about vibes, about loneliness, about the future, and about regret. You know, did I feel like I would fit at the college? No, more precisely, did I feel like I belonged at the college? And did I personally feel like I liked the college when I was there? Were the vibes immaculate? And when I was there, did I feel like I was emotionally, mentally, and socially fulfilled there? Would I feel lonely? Did I see myself being there for four years? And lastly, if I chose another college, would I regret my decision? Those were the questions I had to grapple with before committing. And throw all the logic and foresight you can at the wall. Ultimately, this kind of decision is made by your heart. When I went to Stanford, I was amazed by the prospect of studying there, how exciting it all looked. But you know, I. I stood on that campus and I looked around and I felt unimaginably lonely. I did not belong there. The vibes were off. I felt like people were unapproachable and I could not see myself flourishing for four years at Stanford. And when I went to Yale, oh, <laughs> it was so beautiful. It, it lit a fire in my heart. I initially I thought it was going to be my last choice of the three, but I came back from Harvard on from Visitas and I, I was on my way to Bulldog Days and I remember just coming into New Haven and it looked picturesque in my mind and I fell in love with it again. And you know, at the performance showcase, I heard the most beautiful acapella in my life and I remember just walking and seeing how, how, how beautiful everything was. But, you know, I remember, I remember in the back of my heart, like, in, in the deepest part of, of my gizzard, I felt that I didn't truly belong 
there. It, Yale was a perfect place, but it wasn't my perfect place. Stanford was a perfect place, but it wasn't my place either. But you know, I went to Harvard and I instantly vied with the people I met there. I found clubs that spoke to me. I felt warned by the environment I was in and I knew that Harvard was the place I belonged. A place where I could flourish, a place where I could be introverted, a place where I could be genuine, a place where I could find myself, a place I wanted to be, a place where I could see myself for four years, a place that I wouldn't regret attending and the place that was right for me. And you know, there, there was one moment that set my heart on it. Visitas had just come to an end and it was nearly two o'clock in the morning. And there we were just sitting in the dining hall of Elliot House. My hosts, Neil and his friends, took us there after a stop at El Jefe's. And we talked. We talked about our lives, our future, and where we saw ourselves at Harvard. We talked until three, maybe, maybe almost four a.m. And sitting there, I didn't realize it at the time, but I knew in my heart that I truly belonged here. And now here I am, and I cherish every moment that I spend here. I don't regret choosing Harvard one bit. And so, you know, the, before I close out this video, I have one important thing to say. I am extremely fortunate to have had the privilege to choose between these three schools. And it's important to recognize that for most people that are accepted to or are going to these schools, it doesn't matter where they go because they may have already demonstrated that they have the wit, the work ethic, the creativity, the skill, and the grit to have made it this far. And certainly, even if you didn't go to these schools for undergrad, you can still attend them for graduate school, which is often more important than undergrad. So don't count yourself out just yet. Certainly for me, had I been at Yale or Stanford, or had I been at any of the other schools I've been accepted to, I'm sure I could have made it work for myself and I'd be none the lesser for having done so. My reasons for choosing Harvard were unique to me and very personal to me. And so when you guys have to decide which college that you're committing to, I hope you make the right choice. And who knows, maybe for all my reasoning and logic and forethinking and emotional reactions and heartfelt emotions, Harvard might not end up being the place for me. And maybe it was actually Stanford or Yale or another college. But you know, well, that's life. You can't fully predict the best place for you to go. And so I'll leave you with this. The college you go to is not the be all and end all. It's what you make out of the experience. Being able to explore yourself and your true passions is really the heart of your time as an undergraduate student. And so in four years, I think I'll do a retrospective on my time at Harvard. If it truly was the fulfilling, transformative, experience that I was looking for. And we'll see if my reasons for choosing Harvard were the right ones. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope now you understand why I chose Harvard. And if you're a student applying to colleges this year, I hope you consider Harvard. And I hope to see you on campus someday. With that being said, I'm Ayman and thanks for watching. Um, Ciao for now. Peace.
Harvard.